Is it going to load? It's not going to load, is it? Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome. Today is February 2nd, and uh, just getting started here, trying to see why my pictures won't load that I have for later. Boy, it's going to not be good if it has all the blue on it the whole time, but we'll see. See how it goes. So, I don't have anybody in the chat yet, but most of my views are from um, replays. Anyhow, yeah, I took a bunch of pictures at the store and my computer is just bogged down right now. I don't know if there's a way to to not bog it down. I don't think so. Anyhow, we're going to move on. I've got a very busy today, very busy day. There we go. And I am completely overwhelmed and just have so much to do today. So I want to talk about reselling in general. Uh, my week, it's Friday. This week I went out on Monday. I went out half a day on Tuesday. I went out sourcing both Wednesday, Thursday, and then today, Friday. I am at home for the day, but I do have some kid activities that I need to do. So uh, my day is going to be short, which means that... Uh, I will be probably working late tonight. Hello, Nora, how are you? I knew some people with a, that last name, so I wonder if it's a popular last name or not. Anyhow, okay, so yesterday I went, well, let's see here, Wednesday I went to Marshalls and Party City, and then yesterday I went to a different Marshalls, a Goodwill, and what's the other store? Tuesday morning. So. Uh, you know, planning out your week, I always like to go in different directions and then group up as many stores as I can. Now, I do like to incorporate some new stores every once in a while um, and try them out. And then uh, if they pan out well, then I will incorporate them. And if they don't, then I just don't go to them again. <laughs> so real easy. Anyhow, so Goodwill up first. Let's see here. I spent $27.43. I only got five items to resell. I got one item for my mom. It was not very good. I went to, I got there first thing in the morning and you know there was a lot of things there just they were either broken or the margins weren't there or whatnot. There was some reason not to buy them. I did have a bird that I needed to return. So as I was, I was cleaning these guys up and this is my last one I got to clean up. Uh, one of the birds had some gold flaking gone and so I need to get that guy returned. Anyhow, so that's easy. Uh, I went ahead and changed that in Inventory Lab. I had 11 here. And to do that, you just go Review Batch, scroll down to your item, and change the quantity. If you are listing on the Amazon Seller app, you do something similar with, uh, you go into the shipment, and you can adjust the numbers. Hey, Thrifty Lisa, how are you today? So you can adjust the quantity a little bit in any of your shipments. Now, it's not going to allow you to go from, say, 10 to 30 or from 10 to 1 if you don't have very many items in there. I believe you can only change it about 5 or 6% of the total items in there. So say you have um, 10 items, you can only change, like, 1. If you have 100 items, you can change a lot more. So anyhow, uh, at Tuesday morning, I spent $84.89. And then at Marshall's, I spent $262.32. A lot of twos in that. Anyhow, uh, overall, really good. I got a lot of good discounted stuff at both stores. For listing them and processing them, what I've been doing is upstairs at night when I do like to sit down and kind of relax a little bit, I've been putting grocery sacks out with the number, the price that I have paid for it. So at Tuesday morning, um, let's see here, I'll cover up what I, no, 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 I want to show Marshalls, that's what I want to show. So, let's see here. No, there's no way you can see that, I can't do it. Anyhow, uh, so a lot of things are $5.99, $2, $3, $4, so pretty much I just wrote out a little, uh, piece of paper that says $2, $4, $5, and put them on the front of the bag, and then I sit there and I take stickers off while I'm watching my TV and put them into the correct bag, and then I take that bag down here, and when I'm listing them, then I have all the $6 items. It makes just processing it a lot faster. So starting off with Goodwill finds, and then I want to walk through what I do look for at Marshalls and kind of where I hone in and where I stay away from, and I took a bunch of uh, pictures for that. Having trouble though, like it's not wanting to load. 
I don't know what's going on here. I think my computer's overwhelmed. I'm downloading a bunch of, uh, oh, what do you call it? Like all these folders are being uploaded and downloaded, so I think I just overloaded my computer. But anyhow, back to Inventory Lab. So first thing I want to talk about is Carter Sheets. Carter Sheets do really, really well. I find them all over the place. You do need to make sure they are new. These are super cute monkeys and green, so these will definitely sell. Uh, I find good luck with even discontinued ones. So a lot of parents, you know, if you had one for maybe one sibling, maybe you want to have the same sheet or, you know, something nostalgic in that reason. I don't know. I find that discontinued ones sell really good. $5.99. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, I looked this up yesterday. Day. Oh, the barcode's all covered up. I might have to punch in the number. Uh, but I do find bed sheets at pretty much just about anywhere. So thrift stores, discount stores, Carter's, uh, you name it, man. Um, yeah, I love going into Carter's. I have not tried any of the outlet Carter's to see if I could score anything there. But every once in a while, I'll step into a Carter's store and they will have discounted blankets or sheets or anything. Same with what should I call it? Ross and TJ Maxx, those stores will have them too. What is, what was yesterday? The first. We're in February. Goodness. See, look at this. $40 up here is the other price. So $24 profit on this sucker. It's 105,000 ranking, which is pretty good for baby products. Uh, these sheets definitely will sell in the next six months. It is kind of my time frame for flipping. I want to see everything move within three to six months and $24 profit just off these. I mean, look at how easy these are to pack. It's not gonna break. There's so many positives going on here. Not even funny. Now I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put this stuff because my, my office is, it's super overwhelming here, guys. I have bags upon bags everywhere. My husband has brought me home boxes, which are everywhere. And I'm getting ready for my brother's wedding and we just have a lot of life going on in the house. And so it's, it's kind of crazy around the house. All right, come on. Oh, if my printer doesn't work, I'm going to... I have trouble with my Dymo every once in a while. I don't know if it's a software issue or, like, my computer issue. Good morning, Lisa. How are you? And welcome from Chicago. Is Chicago pretty cold? Are you guys getting a lot of snow up there still? Seems like the rest of the place... A lot of places are getting snow. Anyhow. Brita. Brita filters. One of my faves. Will you send them to Amazon? I send, send what to Amazon? Those sheets? Yeah, I send them to Amazon all the time. Baby baby sheets do very well. Carters do very well. Uh, home goods sometimes has baby stuff on clearance too. Okay, Brita filters. You want to make sure that there's no expiration date, that they're not opened, etc. These cost me $2. Fits all Brita boxed. What is this? This looks like it. 40 gallon three pictures. Got to make sure everything lines up. See how there's several listings for this? Also the box, uh, what do you call it? The packaging sometimes will change on stuff. So let me see here if there's a 40 gallon. Yep, 40 gallons. Perfect. Oh, this one looks better. This one's 88,000 rank. So we're going to go ahead and pick that one, I think. Three white, replacement filters, pictures, yep. Okay, I paid $2, it's going for $18, it's $8.95 profit. No snow, cold as heck, yep. I bet, hi Angie, good morning. Welcome, I'm just here scanning. I really only have about five items from Goodwill, but then I have uh, pictures from, two, from Marshalls. I get them messed up all the time. Okay, next up is this, which is super cool. It is a leather carrying case for your bike to carry your wine, which I love um, wine and wine paraphernalia stuff. Anyhow, I did open up the box. So this slides off. I wanted to make sure that it was new and didn't look used or anything, that it was all in the packaging. It's good to do that at the store. You can do it at home. Just keep your receipts and make sure you're doing your returns. Uh, I don't like re doing returns, so I try to open it up at the store and make sure. Anyhow, the other thing with products like this is this is not a run-of-the-mill product that's everywhere and anything. So the other risk I run with this guy is getting a, hey, you're not supposed to be selling this intellectual property problems, and that's a risk that you're going to have to either take or not take. Um, 
I did go into the Amazon seller app, double check, make sure that I am not restricted in any way. But a lot of times they just try to scare you off the listing by saying, hey, you're not allowed to sell this. Now I have called Amazon a couple of times and Amazon says you do not have to take threats from the company, that you can go ahead and sell it and if they want you not to sell it, they need to go through Amazon. Uh, so far, that's worked. I've ignored letters. I've also pulled product. It's up to you. And it's kind of a bit of a hot subject in the reseller community what to do. Some people say by pulling your product, you're caving into the companies and you're letting them win. And others say, you know, it's not worth risk risking your business. So that is a decision you are going to have to make for your company and what you do with it and how comfortable do you feel. Um, because you know, at the end of the day, if you lose your company because you listen to somebody else and it's just, there's nothing you can really do about it. So it's a personal choice up there. Okay, $39.89, another $25 product. So just in the Carter sheet, Carter sheets and this, that's a $50 profit. And I spent probably about an hour at the Goodwill before I had to move on and do other stuff. So not too shabby for the items that I did get. Yeah, I've only got five to list here, so I like having I like having high dollar items. There were some other items I could have picked up that were in the eight to ten dollar range, but I just you know they just weren't worth it. Too much too much work for a couple of dollars. All right, Lisa says I know you're talking about Amazon, but can you sell products from brands like Walgreens and CVS name brands? Um. So are you talking, Lisa, about like Rite Aid's personal brand, Rite Aid Band-Aids or Rite Aid toothpaste? I don't think so. Uh, the only time I ever had run into that issue was I found some pill cases uh, that were Walgreens brand and I could sell them. There was a listing for it. So I, I do believe that you could try and make a listing. It's I never find anything that's really worth going down that rabbit hole to sell. Uh, Walgreens brand is not something that people and customers really seek out. You know, they're not looking for for Walgreens branded band-aids or whatever Walgreens brands. Um, trying to think what they have in their store. But uh, you could make a listing for them and put it on there. It's it's up to you. I, I just, I don't see the profitability or the reason why you'd want to. But again, I've sold the pill cases and didn't have a problem with it. But that was, gosh, well over a year ago. Anyhow, spoons cost me $2. Let's see here. We're going to put 901. When you see something like this, that somebody has a like new and a new, this probably means that they are not authorized to sell this. That's just my guess. I don't know why they would sell it like new. Maybe it's box damaged, uh, which is a possibility if, if uh, you have damaged product or something, you can sell it as like new and just put in the description box what what's wrong with it and stuff. So only $2.63 profit here. Not a huge thing. There were several other puzzles and games there, but either the margins weren't there or the ranking was too high, so I did not get them. Yankee Candles do sell. Um, I don't ever find any that are worth selling, though. I, I do every once in a while find bath and body stuff that is worth selling. Hello, Chris, good morning. Yeah, so Bath and Body Candles, man, if you can find discontinued scents that were popular, those can be really good. You do have to wrap them and put them in a box because they are glass. You don't want them to break and stuff. And I just, I don't run into those very often. Every once in a while on the Bath and Body website, you can catch really good sales or discounted clearanced out candles and stuff. But again, it's not not something I seek out. But if I run into it, I'll, I'll jump up the opportunity. Oh, let me show this. Snowshoes. Snowshoes do well for me. It's that time of year. Uh, right now, you know, anything with snow is doing really well. It is getting to be almost tax return season, so, you know, people are going to have a bit of money to spend. Let's see here, what else? If I found any St. Patty's Day stuff, I would have sent that in. I'm keeping an eye out for Easter stuff, wedding stuff, science project stuff, anything like that. What I pay here? I paid $8, so paid up a little bit on that for Goodwill. But they are going for $35 and some like new for 40. So we're gonna go in high and it's a $20 profit because if you need to buy snowshoes, you kind of just need to. 
Inventory Lab does not integrate with eBay to my knowledge. I think you can. I think you can link them, but I, I don't know. Uh, I would have to look into that. I don't I don't do anything with eBay in my inventory lab. I do everything on eBay just with eBay. You have boxes of what, Lisa? <laughs> I am curious. If you have boxes of Walgreens stuff, then yeah, go ahead and make a listing and, and do it. Okay, other things that I wanted to just discuss since they are here. It is now February, so what I do is, jeez, glare is horrible. On the outside here, it says January. I don't, yeah, it's not even going to show up, but I have January written right here. You can't see it. And I keep all my receipts in there, so that's, that's, oh, there we go, all my receipts for the month. I take this packet along with this packet, and I put it together. Um and put it into my long-term files. Now, some people are really good about keeping things electronically. If you are good at electronics, then by all means do that. I can't sort my electronics files worth anything. Uh, I am super scared that I'm gonna have corrupt files or whatnot. I'm just not very up to date with it. I am more of a paper person. So at the end of the month, I stuff everything into that envelope and I put all my receipts in there and it goes into my long-term files. And every year around the first of the year, I take whatever seven years old and either get it shredded or burn it or whatever get rid of it um, so this file every time I have an eBay sale I print out the sale slip and for any of my Amazon online orders I print out the sale slip and when I get returns you get a little piece of paper that says this is uh, the return and the reason why I stick those in there too so that's what goes into this file everything else is done electronically and, and I'll print reports out and stuff so that's with QuickBooks and whatnot but um, for hard receipts, I put them in there. So I've been doing a lot of purchasing on Amazon. Uh, I've been doing a lot of retail arbitrage or online arbitrage with that. So every time I make an order, I just print out that sheet because I like to have it right there. Then I know I don't have to keep the electronic copy. I can let it lag out or if, if things happen, I don't have to keep track of it. I know that it's, it's all right there. So Yankee Candles, yeah, you can go ahead and try it. Uh, Definitely going to have to bubble wrap and put it into a box, which is not hard. There's boxes. I would just measure it out and then order whatever boxes. I pay about 50 cents a box for things that I use to package in. Um, hi, Kayla. How are you? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you can go ahead and do Yankee Candles. I don't see why not. Make sh you, sh you should be able to. I don't. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to. Okay, the other thing that I picked up yesterday was for my mother, and it is a set of, golly, there we go, we gotta do like a little angle here. Pierre Cardin handkerchiefs, hanky, set of two, brand new, and they are really cute. So my mom loves this kind of stuff. She puts it in her antique shop, so we wound up getting that for her. It was only $2.99, so pretty cute. All right, Roundabout Thrift says, do you use any online booking? Keep it, oh, in my opinion. Okay, I like QuickBooks. I'm a QuickBook person. I've heard lots of good things about GoDaddy, not knocking GoDaddy at all. The only major difference that I've heard talked about is when you do decide to scale up and do um, invoicing or employees, that GoDaddy doesn't really allow you to, to do that to have employees on it and there is a QuickBook options to pay employees or to send in invoices. Yeah, I, God's daddy. <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah, I've heard really good things about GoDaddy. Uh, nothing, nothing to knock them there, but I've been familiar with Quicken and I like QuickBooks, so I just went with that. I do like the report that prints out at the end of the year. I don't know if GoDaddy does that. I assume they do, but QuickBooks allows, there is an option also for QuickBooks for my accountant to log in and see what things are doing. So I just have to give him access. <laughs> Can't type. You need more coffee. That's what's going on. Okay. That is that. Now let's see if I can get my photos to work. <sighs> And let's see here if we can change. Can we move that over? Will that work? There we go. Is that working for you? All right. Yeah. There we go. 
All right, so I, I took a bunch of photos and I had them sequentially when I was going into the store, like this is the front of the store and da da da. And when I uploaded them, they decided to shuffle around. So I was going to offload the things and put them in nice order for you, but it is taking three years to download and that's just not going to happen. And I have a ton to do today. Like I've, like I've said, I'm just completely overwhelmed. And if you are feeling overwhelmed, I really suggest Google Keep. I keep lists for everything. If you are a busy parent or whatnot, it's really nice to have different lists for everything. Um, we're a huge list family. I don't talk about it a whole lot, but my husband has really bad ADD. And so for him, it's very hard to keep on task and then you throw in two kids to the mix and you throw in all the activities that come with having a family and it can get very overwhelming. So we swapped to Google Keep earlier this, or last year, early last year, and <clears throat> it has been just really good for us as a family. So I have one for work, I have one for PTA, I have one for all the stuff I need to do for my taxes and I just can put it all out and it kind of gets it out of my head and then anybody who I need to have permissions for it can can go in and look at it and and add and delete and stuff. So we have one, you know, for grocery list or upcoming events that we need to purchase things for stuff like that. Anyhow, so walking into Marshall's yesterday, I took pictures and this one we're going to talk about really quick. There's two parts to this. And what I wanted to discuss was when I make a purchase for something and when I don't every time this is the question I get most asked about Amazon FBA is, should I buy this? Should I make the purchase? And, you know, everybody is going to have their own parameters on what you're comfortable with, both spending wise, return wise, rank wise, etc. With that being said, the way I look at things is I kind of like a point system. If the margins are there, that's a good point. If the rank is there, that's another good point. If there's no competition, that's another good point. And depending on how many points it has stacked for or against the thing, I will make a decision based on that. So you've got to kind of incorporate everything. So this first item right here, I did purchase. The price was $4. And so that means if I take out $4 out of this $20 profitability, I'm making about $16. So $16 off of one small item is pretty good. You know, it's definitely, definitely up there in my range of what I want to want to make. Um, what was I? Uh, I had a train of thought. Anyhow, the rank, not so good. Top 5% in sports. And, you know, with this, 5% is not that great. I like to stay in with the 1%. However, there is none for FBA. There is only a merchant fulfilled. There's none for used. So I would be the only one for FBA. And the, a lot of Amazon you know, if there's none for FBA, then that's a pretty good sign. That's a really good high rank there or, you know, high in points or whatever you want to call it. The other thing I, I think about is sports. What do we got going on here? We are just coming out of winter. We are going into a lot of sports season. This happened to be a basketball um, item ish and basketball, soccer are really big right now. So that's another really great, you know, stacking up points for it. So, you know, we've got a category that's going to have an increase in sales going on. We've got no competition. We've got a $4 item that I could potentially make $16 on. Do I think this is going to sell in the next six months? Yes, I do. So I'm going to go ahead and put it into the cart. All right. Uh, Nora asks, if you're just starting an Amazon, would you recommend having an Amazon fulfilled or should I do it? I have never done merchant fulfilled. My whole point of getting the Amazon was to get the stuff out of my house. And that's because of how my household is. Right now we have just a ton going on. I love the ability to jump into Amazon whenever I want or walk away whenever I want. If I need to take three days off and deal with family stuff, I can. With eBay or with Merchant Fulfilled, if you have orders, you have a particular time you need to get those orders filled. Now you can make money Merchant Fulfilled. There's a lot of people that are very successful at it, but you have to have everything at your house inventoried and ready to go, just like on, on eBay. So you've got to be able to find it, package it and move it. So, you know, however you're set up, you got to make that decision. For me, I needed something that I could walk away from and, and not worry about. Okay, so this next product I did not purchase. It is was $16.99. It was a $5 buy price, so that means I would get about $6 back in profit. 
it was top 2% in sports, but it was for a sport that was not, not as popular in my mind. Plus, somebody was already there at $16.99 with the competition. So I went ahead and did not get that one. In fact, no, I want to say it was $6. So it was, you know, $5.46. It was just quite under 100%. Anyhow, I didn't like the product itself as much. I didn't think that it would sell as fast and it was competition, so I, I stepped away from that and just put it back. Next up, uh, okay, this area of the store, and since it's all going to be scattered here, you're just gonna have to work with me. This area of the store, I leave alone. Most of the stuff is already on Amazon for a really good price. Yes, it is. Uh, discounted here right now but it's also very big bulky there's a high return on these types of gadgets there's a high breakage rate you know a lot of this stuff is kind of junky from China and gets broken and stuff so I just stay away from it you know, you know these guys are really big it's gonna take you know like four things will fit into a box so shipping costs are gonna be high anyhow I, I don't ever see anything that's that's worth my time over here same with over here this is a clearanced out area. You know, I guess I could have looked at these basketballs and footballs. They do well too. I just didn't have time that day. Um, let's see here, earphone thingies and this boom box. I think I've scanned this boom box before, no good. UW stuff, uh, it's hit or miss and Seahawk stuff, hit or miss. I stay away from the signage just because there's a thousand listed on eBay. I don't, or not eBay, on Amazon. I don't really do anything with that. The slippers, I was scanning them in the fall when we were going into Q4, and I did do some slippers going into Q4. But right now, going into summertime, no, not really. I'm not gonna, not gonna bother with that. So here's some more, I'll just say Father's Day type of stuff. I stay away from bags. Bags are a dime a dozen. These barbecue sets could be good, but usually not. There's, here's the thing. They're usually like. Marshalls will say they're worth $20 retail, and you can have them for 10. Well, they're gonna be on Amazon for $19.99. There's just no margins there. So unless if you can find them for $2 or something, you, it's just not worth your time. Hats, did a lot of hats in the fall. Um, you gotta be ungated for a lot of brands. Anything that's no name brand, like these scarves, unless if they have a really big brand name to them, I'm not going to even look at them. They've gotta have something really going for them, like NFL or Adidas or something really good. And I'm done with hats. Like I don't wanna really get anything winter, winter wise. A lot of this stuff is returns. It's been damaged. It's been roughed around on the Ross floor. I don't know if you've seen products after freaking the holidays. It's just, they've been, They've been abused, and so I stay away from that. Okay, shoes. I did go around to all, I, I am ungated for Nikes, so I went around to all the Nike stuff and looked at that. I only found one that was really good, but when I opened them up, they were supposed to be one color and they were completely different colors. So you do have to watch for that. Make sure you're opening and double checking anything if you are gonna dive into this. For the rest of them, I don't really know of any other brands, but shoes is something that I'm just recently trying to get into. So when you are starting a new brand, you gotta do a ton of research. Go slow. Don't go in and spend all your capital buying something because you think you know what you're doing. You don't. And realize you don't. You're gonna have to, to sit there and learn. So uh, I dedicate about five, 10 minutes every time I step into the stores and do a little bit of research, go and scan. I did buy one pair of shoes. That was a different brand than Nike's. Uh, and according to the rank and everything, it looked good. You can get hose really fast on shoes because it is a bit higher of an item. You're talking about spending $20, $30 and selling for $70, $80. And clothes, shoes has a bit higher of a return rate. so. Anyhow, I dedicate, since this is the one that I'm learning, I am spending some time every time I go out and increasing my knowledge. It takes a while. You're not gonna learn how to do this overnight. So start slow and build up. Build on that knowledge every single time you go out. Clothes. I don't look at any clothes except for active wear. Yoga stuff and, and junk like that. You know, people love Nike, Adidas, yoga wear, things like that. Calvin Klein shirts, no, nobody's gonna go online and really get that. If it was winter coats, you could look at winter coats. But I, again, clothes is like shoes for me. I'm, I'm still learning and so 
I've tried scanning some pants and I find that for popular ones, I'm still not allowed to sell super popular ones and pretty much everything like else, I just, I'm not having good luck, but I'll go and spend a few minutes and scan. Go spend 10 minutes, scan, you know, 20, 30 items and see what, see what your opinion is. Oh, these are the dresses I bought for myself. I, I needed two dresses and that was a huge score. I found two dresses. They were $40 a piece. So that was great because I have nothing to wear to all these activities I have to do in the spring for the bridal stuff. Hair dryers, curling irons, and whatnot, oftentimes overlooked. I did find one. Uh, usually I spend about three to five minutes, scan a bunch of stuff, and come up empty handed. But today, or yesterday, I found one that was a good one. It was buy for about $20.25, sell for about $89.99 had a good rank. A lot of things won't come up. So like uh, Fahrenheit here, not coming up. So pick a brand, scan five of them. If none of them ever come up, maybe do a keyword search. If none of them come up, then hey, cross it off your list. You don't have to scan that anymore. Uh, makeup bags, those are hit or miss. Sometimes I find good makeup bags or travel bags. A lot of times not, but I think, I think that's really important to know that you can scan 40 items here and come up with one item to sell. So don't sit here and think that you're going to go scan a bunch of stuff and have all this amazing stuff. You got to work for it. It's called work for a reason. Beauty. If you are ungated for beauty, that is awesome. If you're not, um, you know, you're just going to have to bear with me because a lot of the stuff at these stores is for a lot of categories that are ungated, but keep trying out there. It never hurts to hit that apply button every couple of months and see if you get in. For beauty items, I look for big brand stuff that you would normally see elsewhere. People are very name brand um, orientated. If you just have a run of the mill salt scrub, it's there's just not a market out there for it. But like Neutrogena is a good brand. Um, you know, you can also find Neutrogena stuff at Target and do the couponing thing or clearance stuff. Anyhow, for other cosmetic stuff, always make sure that it's sealed. Watch out for expiration dates. And I do like to get stuff that's already shrink wrapped so that you know that it's manufactured seal. Boxes that aren't shrink wrapped, you know, how do you know that somebody hasn't opened it and, and done something they shouldn't have? I like to make sure that it's definitely sealed. All right, in this area, slippers, nope, no slippers now. In the fall, I did a few scanning and slippers, but I did not find any for um, women. For lingerie, I do go and scan bras and panties. You can have good luck in that area if you are ungated. Bras and panties are pretty easy too. They're lightweight, easy to ship, easy to poly bag. Um, you do have to work for them though. There is a lot of a lot of stuff that's not listed or not profitable. Purses, I stay away from purses. Man, purses scare me. The amount of fakes out there and people buying stuff and then returning it is just crazy. Uh, same with luggage. Luggage is too big. I don't ever mess with luggage. So I pretty much just bypass the whole purse section. Again, the travel bags, maybe, but kitchen gadgets. Here's somewhere to go and spend all your time. And this is open to all. So kitchen gadgets, go spend 20, 30 minutes and scan away. You will soon find what brands are good to sell, what brands are not good to sell. There's definitely certain colors that are desirable in the market and certain colors that are not. Amazon is on a lot of listings and they're not on a lot of listings, but kitchen gadgets, knives, pots, pans, all of that stuff. That is a good chunk of my time when I'm at the store. Things to watch out for. A lot of returns at the store and they just slap them back up on the shelf and they'll have something missing. A lot of spoons and product get broken. I don't know what they're doing, but uh, you know, if a customer drops it on the floor, like say these, uh, I believe these are wood right here, you know, an end might get, get chipped or something. So watch out for that. Um, sometimes plastic and these types of plastic cases get damaged or chipped. Um, so you just gotta watch out, but it's a fun area to, to hang out in. And once you find one thing, then you can go back and usually there's multiples. Like say if this blue flipper did well, you know, there looks to be about five or six there. I did find a couple things. I want to say, yeah, I did find a couple of things here. It was the day before. I don't remember, but again, see all the items here. It would take you a long time to scan all of them. So, Pick uh, one brand and do five of that. Pick a different brand, do five of that and see where your scanning takes you. Angie asks, how do you find info on an item if you're not sure if it's hazmat? 
I'm not sure about sometimes filling out the form. I have a collagen water cartridges. Okay, so the hazmat form wants to know if there's anything, God, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but if it's wanting the hazmat form filled out and you are unsure, then I would not do it personally. Um, you can call like, you can go to Brita's website and request the MSDS and whatnot. And with that, then you could do the application and, and send it to Amazon. But like, say this, crib sheets, they want to know about hazmat. You know the crib sheets are made of, what, 100% cotton or something like that. It doesn't have any hazardous materials in it. So that's a pretty easy, easy thing there. If you have something that's, a, say, a toy and you make lip balm out of it, it's for girls and you make lip balm or something, chances are you just, you need to get the MSDS for that or SDS is now the new terminology. Okay. Uh, you could, yeah, go to, you can go to the Culligan website and get MSDSs and you could just email customer support. Glassware. Glassware is, again, one of those that's about 90%. If I'm going fast through the store, I skip glassware altogether. But I, you know, had a few minutes today, so I went ahead and scanned a bunch. You can find a lot of Ray Dunn here. Ray Dunn is, I've had some good luck with Ray Dunn. I've had some not so good luck with Ray Dunn. Uh, it's on eBay a lot of times too. One of the Ray Dunns was, like I found a Mr. and Mr. Cup mug set. It wasn't here. It was back towards the other store. And I was looking at that on, on eBay just to see and uh, wasn't really a good seller. Hey, Nikki, how are you? Okay, so one product I did find was Disney. I look for Disney, Star Wars. Well, I guess Star Wars is Disney. We got Despicable Me here. So I like to look out for those name brands. Let's see here. We're going to look at it first. So this was on the shelf, glassware, $4.99. If you go and you read all of the glassware paraphernalia junk on the Amazon site. It says that each cup needs to be individually wrapped. So one suggestion would be if you think that this is not good enough, you would take these cups out, throw some bubble wrap or foam or whatever your paper around them, put them back in here. And then I always bubble wrap these guys up and then stick them in a poly bag. That's just how I do my glassware. You don't want it broken. Um, okay. So I did not get them. Here is, what, why did I take two? Oh yeah. Cause I wanted to show you the this is basically the same thing, and all I did was this is top 14%, and that equates to 556,000 in kitchen to give you an idea of ranking. So if you are looking on your Amazon seller app and doing this, you definitely want to, to download or know kind of what the ranking equates to for you. This is one of the reasons why I like Inventory Lab is because I can just see it's 14% there, and I know I'm not going to get anything that's not 1% in glassware. Uh, I am good, but swamped today. I am very swamped. So trying to go through this fast and then get to work because I have tons of inventory to get out today. Uh, anyhow, this was $24 net 15. It had a $5 buy price, so $10 profit. That looks really good, except for you do have competition and it was a little high in the rank. But things that keep in mind, you know, if they were going to redo the Disney Sleeping Beauty coming up, then maybe you'd want to go in on that. Why is it? I've got swirly things. Hmm. Can you guys hear me or is it not loading? Looks like maybe I'm back. I don't know. Let me know in the, in the chat if it's, if it's not loading. It may have, may have, uh, bummered out here. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, I can't remember what Disney movies are coming up. You know, they just did Cinderella and they did Beauty and the Beast. So let's say this was before Beauty and the Beast and it was a Beauty and the Beast and you know the movie's coming out in six months and you know the popularity of that is going to go up, then I would go ahead and do that. I haven't heard any news about Beauty and the Beast, or I mean Sleeping Beauty. I've heard rumor about The Little Mermaid. I don't know if that's true. You could look it up, but... Uh, there was one other they were doing there. I heard they were doing Mary Poppins and something else that was really popular. Anyhow, Tupperware. Most of this is 
I, I, again, if I'm going fast, I skip this department altogether. But every once in a while, you will find good containers in here and organizing materials that will will be good. But it is, it's a lot of scanning for not very much. The other thing is these are not very high dollar items. I mean, really, what are you gonna? What's the average selling price of a Tupperware? Like fifteen dollars, maybe if you're lucky. You're not gonna find thirty dollar pieces of things in here or forty dollar pieces of things. So it's not really, not a good area to spend your time, not wise. Picture frames, junk, don't ever go in this department. Dog stuff and cleaning, not dogs, well, we can talk about dog stuff, but cleaning materials, again, nothing here. These are seasonal table runners, skip that area. Uh, kitchen towels, every once in a while I will dip into the kitchen towels, it has to be something really good, it's not something that I go and I spend my time on though. Again, kitchen towels. What are you going to get for a kitchen towel? Like $15 maybe. Paper products and scrapbooking stuff. I do go in here and I just look for name brand stuff. Every once in a while they'll have knock knock stuff in here. Um, anything that's off brand like run of the mill diary or paper, it's junk. You don't need to, to waste your time scanning that. Books, I did scan a few vegan books and marriage books. It was something like how to keep the romance alive with your cooking. Um, and they didn't come up. They had really good good rank and that, but the profitability wasn't there. It was something like sell the book for 25 and Marshalls wanted 10, so the margins just weren't there. On my screen, I'm still swirling around. Uh, Kayla, can you see my screen or let me know? For organizing stuff in your house, skip this area. It's pretty much junk. Unless if you are organizing your office, which I did get something, and I'm going to put a picture on it later, but uh, one of those jewelry holders, I'm gonna put all my labels on, so I was super excited about that. I've been wanting one of those, um, something to keep all my labels together for a while. Cleaning supplies, stay away from this altogether. Most of this has hazmat stuff to it and it, the margins just aren't there. Every once in a while I will find method products and method products can be good, but you have to be ungated for, uh, oh, maybe not, maybe not. I think um, method you might be able to to get away with the kitchen to kitchen category. Gugon, they sell Gugon here. Uh, I pick up things to polish crisp, uh, polish silver with in this area. So, you know, grab stuff for yourself, grab stuff for work, but overall 90% of it's not good. Pet department, I skip this altogether. I have scanned the pet department 50 times and I've never found anything good to sell. Not saying that you won't, but I don't. What is this? The other side of pet department. Yep, no, I don't ever find anything. I've I've scanned the cat scratchers. I've scanned pet beds. Here's some more uh, Ray Dunn stuff down here. You can spend your time looking up Ray Dunn stuff, but to me, it's just not worth my time. So I skip that. I skip this area. A couple people have said, go ahead and look for shower heads and have really good luck with shower heads. I have tried, again, a dozen times and I don't in my area. Towels, I skip towels altogether. <laughs> There's sheets, I've been trying to make sheets work. I finally bought my first sheet set. I'm not gonna tell you the brand, go watch some other people and, and they'll tell you what brands sell well and don't sell well. You do have to sit there and look it up. It's a lot of leg work for not much, but sheets have a higher um, price. You know, you're buying things for 30, selling them for 90, so. What is this? Oh, let's see here. Found this, this was pretty cool. It is a snow scooter. So I thought it was a really cool product. So I wanted to go ahead and scan it. It uh, was $20 there and not very good. Now, if you do wanna spend, we'll say, say if this was $10, it was half off or something, you could get a $5 profit back, which is you know a 50% return, but I just didn't think it was that great. It also is very bulky and would be hard to ship, so. You know, I don't know why it's $31 FBA and $50 new. This kind of tells me that maybe they're trying to dump inventory before uh, long-term storage fees. We got long-term storage fees in 13 days, so it's about time to go through my inventory 
again and just dump prices, get rid of it, um, send it to send a sale, create an ad, whatever you want to do. But I don't like having storage fees. I like to clean out my inventory every six months. It's good practice. Get rid of the stale old stuff. I don't like bad juju. All right, baby department. Spend a lot of time here. You can find some really good stuff like Carter sheets in here. Uh, you got to go do the legwork. I'm not going to do the legwork for you. All the stores are different. There are some brands in here that are going to be restricted. There are some things that after you scan five or ten of them, you'll see that it's just not worth your time. But uh, once you hone in and you know what brands to look for, then you can sweep through this department. And once you spend some time in this one, you can go to other stores and do the same thing because they usually have the same type of product. At least mine do in my area. Okay, socks, underwears, all this stuff right here, pretty much anything that's not shirts or pants to wear, I go and I scan, but I'm ungated for clothes. So if you're not ungated for clothes, try. It's a pretty easy one that you can get into with just a little bit of time in your account. Uh, I didn't have to do any special selling application. I just clicked applied and I was allowed in and that was after about a year and a half of selling. So give it a go. A lot of people get the discounted stuff and flip it on eBay. So if you're an eBay seller, you know, that's something to look forward to. I do like do like these departments. Now over here, sweaters and stuff. Again, I look for the athletic wear. Nothing else is really worth my time. Why did I scan it? Why, I have no idea why I, did, why I took a picture of this. Um, let's see here. Oh, this is typical. Find a lot of things that are in top 1% but the buy price was five or six dollars, which means that my profit is only like two bucks. Not something that I really wanna spend my time on. Just not not enough there. Now, if you did change it to the $20, $20 price, it gives you a little bit more profitability, but wasn't there. Things like this, if it pops up, and this is the same image that you'll find on Inventory Lab or on your Amazon selling app. It says no image is available. To me, this means it's either a brand new item and somebody hasn't uploaded the images yet, or something's not quite right. I stay off of those listings. I don't have time to, to really figure it out, and I don't. I just need to spend my time in other places. Uh, inspiration, I took this picture because I am a Merch by Amazon person, so anytime I see something that gives me uh, some inspiration to make shirts, I go ahead and snap a picture. I keep a file on my hard drive of all pictures like this, and then I can go through and, you know, my shirt wouldn't be like this, but it's an interesting, caught my eye, so it may inspire me to do something similar. So if you are doing other creative things, you know, you gotta have your inspiration from somewhere and snap those pictures when you're out and about. Underwear. Other than staring at men and their abs, I don't really go to this department much at all. Sometimes you can find things, but I often find, again, the margins aren't there. They want $10, $12, and it's going on Amazon for $20, so just not enough margin there. The reject clearance area. Uh, again, I don't spend a whole lot of time here. I did find one thing, uh, some sealed games that were over here that were clearance down to $2 and they made sense to buy. But a lot of the stuff here is broken, damaged, junky, seasonal, or downright just, there was a reason people didn't buy it. So, going to stay away from it. Let's see here, uh, iPad cases. A lot of times they're the junky ones that people don't want or not a good name brand. They were really discounted. If you need one for yourself, great place to look, but not for reselling. Baskets and storage wear, not anything that's going to sell online very well. Looks like almost everything else here was damaged. Inflatable Christmas tree damaged. We've got some underwear and cases and junk. There just really wasn't anything. I honed in on the new sealed games, but that was it. So that's all I got for pictures for you guys. I hope that helps when you're out looking and about. The Marshalls is pretty similar to TJ Maxx, which is pretty similar to everything else. And yeah, I am done. I've only got three people, so Kayla had said the picture was good, but I'm wondering now because it's still, still swirling on mine. Anyhow, I've got a ton of stuff to do. I hope everybody else is having a good day and take care out there.